Elbow arthroscopy is performed in lateral recumbency with the affected side down. Drawn out some landmarks here. Medial epicondyle being the most important. The radius, the ulna. The scope portal is approximately one centimeter distal and caudal to the epicondyle. And the instrument port is one centimeter cranial to the scope port. The needle is first introduced at the level of the planned scope port. Aspiration is performed to retrieve some joint fluid and confirm entry. Next, we're going to infuse saline to distend the joint. Once this is done, the port is made with an 11 scalpel blade and the blunt obturator with cannula is introduced into the joint. The first view is typically of the ulnar notch region and by having the light post in the cranial direction we can look up caudally. An egress needle is placed just caudal to the medial epicondyle and we are ready for our joint explore. So we're going to start sweeping cranially here now. You can see at the top of the screen we have the humeral condyle, the medial aspect, and we are now angling the arthroscope to look at the tip of the medial coronoid process. And in this cadaveric specimen, we actually have a slightly displaced medial coronoid fragment. We're going to continue with our explore and look up at the humeral condyle, heading back caudally to the level of the ankyneal process. We're now going to create our instrument port, approximately one to one and a half centimeters cranial to the scope port. This is done in the traditional manner with a needle first to confirm placement and then with an 11 blade expanding that hole with a pair of straight mosquito hemostats so we have a nice wide channel for the instrument port. Probing is performed first and here we can see that we're putting our probe right in that fissure region between the fragment and the main or the rest of the coronoid process. Cartilage is palpated, you can feel over the region. Here we see a little bit of iatrogenic injury to the cartilage which uh, we want to avoid as much as possible. You can also palpate here the humeral condyle, medial humeral condyle where we would find our OC lesions or any kissing lesions that may occur concurrently with fragmented coronoid process. Now just medial to the tip of the coronoid you should find the medial collateral ligament running from up to down and then just medial to that is the intra-articular biceps tendon. My preferred method for coronoid fragment removal is to create a little bit more room for grasping forceps by burring away some of that caudal margin of the fissured region. Here we can see that debridement happening with our burr and now that fragment is a lot more isolated and ready to remove. Uh, in this case this is being done with just a pair of straight mosquito hemostats but uh, grasping forceps are also very useful. The margins of the remaining cartilage are cleaned up with a curette or a shaver till we get a nice smooth surface of the ostectomized region. The radial head should now be very visible. Pronation supination can be performed to identify the radial head with a bit more confidence. Now a shaver is introduced and we are just now cleaning out some debris with aggressive lavage.